University works with uh, inmates. A lot of his material is very, very complex material, and Kay is going to help uh, this book. Um, he should be able to go through. I'm going to have to get this back at some point, but, but, but you can have it for now and you can mail it back to me. Um, that was a whole week, week's worth of posting in this day. I've been studying that all week. So, uh, Stephen Spozzi then goes into working with uh, anger management in all the different levels. The practice of this teaching, this type of element, combined with the character education that we do and the other conflict resolution programs that we have. Okay. Compassionpower.com. The regular, passion, uh, the regular practice of compassionate teaching and parenting is guaranteed to increase cooperation, self-esteem, self-discipline in children, teenagers, teachers and parents. And it is focused on reducing anger, resentment, hostility in children, teachers and parents. The deeper connections of this uh, it's compassion, teaching, and parenting programs, deep in connections between all the family members. It's not enough that we just do a really good job in the schools, we have to work with parents as well. And parents are freaking out. I work in the urban areas of New Jersey and Patterson. If you ever heard of Eastside High School and the movie made about that? Um, very, very intense school. I, I never had any issues there because I was just very, very respectful of the teachers and the students. And, um, Doing this type of work then really helps. The more respect we have, all the different levels, but the, I found in Patterson that the teachers were much more challenging than teenagers um, because of the attitudes of different people. Uh, emotional level and truly the remarkable level of these deeper emotional connections. Uh, compassionate teachers and parents help their children develop the five R's of successful living which are resourceful, responsibility, respect, relationship investment, and regulation of impulses and emotions. Which is the most important of these five? Respect. How many people say respect? Why? Yeah, the more you respect others, that's what I found in East Side the teaching, the more you respect others, the more you understand others, the more likely it will come back to you. It's not always necessarily going to come back to that student who's upset or had a hard day, but somebody else will respect you. It's a universal law. How about anybody else? What do you think is the second one? Okay, because? Um, because I think when you're able to regulate and control your emotions, then you tend not to get in all the conflict. And when you follow your impulse, I'm looking at the word successful living, if you follow your impulse, then you stay more, because when you know you have a lot of impulse, there's troubles and that sort of thing. So I think that's the most important. When you're able to control yourself, mm -hmm. then everything else mm -hmm. comes back. Yeah, sure. It's an element of being able to regulate your impulses and emotions. Uh, do women have more emotions than men? <laughs> First, I'm going to ask the ladies. Okay, take care. By far, what do you think? I don't think that they have more emotions, I just think that makes for us more. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> it's true, women express your emotions and feelings. When I got married, my wife is a very emotional lady. She said, honey, we should talk more. Honey, we just spoke for two hours. <laughs> she 
expresses her emotions all the time, whereas men tend to box it in, hide it. And the problem with that is, one of the biggest issues of anger is because we bury it so much. Whereas you talk, you go and talk with your girlfriend and talk it out, try this, try that, whereas we just say it doesn't exist. That's right. So we have to help young teenagers, especially teenage boys, share their emotions and feelings in a healthy way. That's why sports are so good. Because in sports you can get all your aggression out in a healthy way, right? So any young people encourage them to do sports because they play basketball for years and years. My sisters play basketball. I don't get on the basketball court and just scream. Everybody look at me. What's wrong with you? Oh, I don't nature. And I scream out nature. And people are fighting with me. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm letting out all my feelings. <laughs> so, but it's, you've got to come out some way because if you bury it all the time, eventually it'll come out. And that's why there's so much domestic abuse. And that's why so, much, so many issues in homes and in schools because everything is buried, but we have to be able to let them out. All right. Uh, Compassionate teaching and parenting does not mean letting your children get away with bad or selfish behavior, but creating clear boundaries. Okay? Boundaries are authoritative parenting. And the more we do it from a younger age, the better that they'll be as teenagers. Character education is not a quick fix. The conflict resolution program we have, this type of program, is, can be implemented quicker. But character education is over the course of life. So it's from first grade all the way through 12th grade and older. It doesn't mean overindulgence or materialistic generosity. Compassion means seeing beneath the surface of children's behavior to their motivation. Motivation is a key element of understanding someone's behavior. If we don't get to the motion, we don't get to why they're acting out. Something may have happened. I remember when I was teaching in the urban areas in the US, I'd go in and I'd see that young girl or young boy would be really upset or angry and then you find out something that happened at home and then I just let them sleep. I mean, so you have to kind of be sensitive to where the kids are at. Um, and compassion means connecting with where they're at. Also, understanding their emotions. One of the biggest mistakes I see teachers and parents make is we try and explain things at our level of intellect. And kids don't think like we think, especially 14, 15, 16 year old, they don't think like that. Well, if you jump off that, then you have this. They think, oh, that'll be fun, okay? So it's immediate gratification, okay? That's what they're thinking of. If I drive at 90 miles an hour around the roads here, then that's gonna be fun. If I wind up in the ocean, no, I'm not gonna wind up in the ocean because it doesn't happen, I won't have an accident. So they can't think like that. So empowering children and young people to control their behavior by teaching them to regulate their emotions and feelings, being in touch with them, and being able to, especially as young children, be able to identify them. Also as adults and uh, teachers, we have to be able to learn, to understand their experience of the world, understand their emotions and what they're going through, connect on their level again, and understand your response. Now in communication, there's a lot that we don't know that we portray. For instance, in, uh, when you're communicating with someone, the vast majority is not verbal. What is it? It's body language and what else? See, I think the people of St. Vincent are really wonderful people. They're so loving and caring, they really care about 